Hello, folks. Hey, Kadena crew. Welcome back to Kadena Campfire. This is now Community Call Lucky Number 33. And we're really, really delighted to bring David Gillett with us here today. Hello, David. Hi, Tyler. How are you? Pretty excellent, sweet looking hoodie, man. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I was uh, mentioning earlier, it was, uh, you know, one of the most prized possessions I got. Oh. With my journey through Kadena, so I'm super incredible. Pumped. Well, super excited to give you a, a little bit more of an intro and, and get to know you a bit more. Uh, we're gonna start off as usual with a few updates. And oh, I, I guess I got to introduce Campfire. I think we I see a lot of familiar names here in, in the audience. Uh, thanks, folks, for for coming here, being here. Hey, Sifon. Hello, Amir. Great to have Hello. everyone in the house. Uh, for those, for any that haven't been to a campfire before, this is a space for us to chat together, community driven, bring together interesting folks from Kadena and from the Kadena ecosystem, and happy to chat everything uh, with David and everything Kadena. So, really excited to have this be, as usual, a community driven spot and place to, for everyone to, to gather and, and chat about Kadena. We'll have a few updates at the beginning that I'll give from the Kadena side of things. Uh, then we'll jump in to learn more about David and, and, and his role. And uh, then we'll drive, you drive, we'll drive right in. We'll dive into some community questions. And uh, so definitely feel free to ask away in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them roughly quasi the order that people ask things in. So on the updates front of things, last week we had an awesome campfire with Hyperlane. So big update in the last week or so is uh, Kadena partners with Hyperlane. Definitely check out that campfire. If you missed it last week, it was a uh, spicy and really good one. Next up, uh, our marketing team, which is, of course, now headed by Mike, our CMO, met with Galetica Plus, our marketing agency, to kick off things and discussions around new website, go to market strategy, etc. So we'll be seeing the fruits of that labor in the near future. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a, a tweet there talking about more. So check out Mike's Twitter. Next, there's a new X space announcement every Monday at 5 p.m. UTC with Dave and Ryan. Yeah, X space, not to be confused with uh, Space X. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the other Musk one, the, the audio one that doesn't rumble and shake houses. Yes, well, this is the the Kadena version on what is still known via URL as Twitter, but otherwise known as X. Our partners, Varius.io and Superconnectors.io, released their newest article in the Designing for the Kadena Chain series. Uh, so we have a, a cool Medium post here that you should definitely check out. If all is magic, oh, look at that. Mateo, that was incredible uh, and beautiful. There's the link right there. Definitely check that out. It should be an uh, interesting one. And... We're getting towards the end of our updates here, but this is kind of exciting. The first sprint of our Zeely campaign concluded, and there are over 3,200 participants. Wow, that's amazing. And five lucky winners. So thanks to everyone that participated in the Zeely campaign. Uh, there may even be some interesting things that happen later this campfire for those that are here. And you can check out the Kadena tweet. Can I still call it a tweet? Can you call it like a Zeet? Or what's the X... Uh, I'm not sure if we have a new name for this yet. Uh, I'm going to go Zeet. I'll and... get on board with that. <laughs> hey, if I got David's endorsement, you got to start with one person, right? And finally, we have the Q3 newsletter has been released with a pretty swanky looking image. Yeah, I wish that would show up there. It looks like a magnifying glass on some kind of, uh, I don't even know, psychedelic sand with the number three in it. Anyway, Q3 update has been posted on Medium. Go check that out. It should be interesting. Is his mic sounding scuffed to anyone else but me? Hey, David, how's my mic sounding? Can you hear me okay? Or are you hearing some weird stuff? It's pretty scuffed. I'm going to have oh, to. Oh, shit. It. Well, any better now or are we still in trouble? Ooh, that sounds better. Ah, well, I replaced my mic cable, but uh, I think oh. Oh. Is, it, is it bad again? It's just a little static, a little static in and out. Huh. Okay. 
Well, maybe I'll turn off my fancy mic. Apparently, I'm having some issues with something that relates to it. Um, well, that should uh, get rid of the scuffing, yeah? There we go. All right. Well, we'll do that for now, and uh, I'll have to figure out what's going on with my, my mic later. Thanks. Thanks for the... Yeah. Yep. Probably loose cable. Need to do better cable routing. Oh, well. The the technology. I hear foil does wonders. <laughs> I'm here. Is that foil on my head? Or should it go around the cables or anyway? Yeah. Thanks folks. Well, uh, without further ado, David, super excited to have you here. I, I know we've, um, very lucky to have you, uh, uh, people may know your, your voice from hosting, um, different, uh, X spaces and, uh, speaking around the community and, and moderating lots of stuff, but, um, folks may be seeing you for the first time with a pink hoodie today. So That's always right. a, a face to the name, uh, David, welcome. Would love to hear just a little bit more about your, your journey and background and, how you found your way to, to be with Kadena. Yeah, for sure. No, thanks for having me. Um, I knew this was coming. I think Mateo warned me of this, you know, quite some time ago. So I've had a lot of time to think and no time to prepare. So let's, let's go for it. First, I'm going to apologize to everybody for the raspy voice. Uh, I'm not entering a new singing career. I'm actually just recovering from COVID. Um, so I've been down for the last few days, but starting to feel better. Um, but still sounding a little worse, but I have my, I have my coffee. I'm only on cup three, so I don't know what, what cup number you're on Tyler, but I think I'm going to give you a run for your money when it comes to coffee consumption. <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I've been, I've hosted a couple of spaces so far, um, and they went great. Um, I don't know if anybody saw my tweet after the last space, we had 379 people, um, attend a uh, drop into the last space. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. So I really want to thank everybody first off for, for sharing and being part of that. Um, and we're just going to keep growing it and we're, we're going to keep doing it. So um, I'm super excited about that. Um, but a little bit about me I, and because I've hosted a couple of spaces, what I thought I would do is skip sort of the things that I've repeated and maybe give you guys a little bit um, of new insight, a little bit new information uh, about me, just so we don't get too repetitive. Um, one thing I don't think I've mentioned is, you know, Mike, Mike started by talking about how he's from Chicago and all the things, and, and that's great. And, um, you know, I love our American friends, but I'm Canadian, born and raised uh, in Canadian. Uh, go Jays go, if anybody's watching baseball uh, or in the playoffs, which is nice. Um, and I've, I've had the privilege of living in several places, actually. I've lived in the U.S. for a while. I've lived across several places in Canada. And I've had the, the privilege of traveling across the world um, through a previous job. There we go love it i haven't i'm still on drip i haven't moved past drip yet <laughs> yeah hey so, drip gets the job done you don't need advanced technology to get a good cup of coffee no it's all about the water there's my tip coffee it's, all is about, all about the water. it's all about high quality mineral water there we go <laughs> yeah yeah people say coffee is about the beans it's about the water it's 80 percent water what yeah no, probably more <laughs> yeah, and we get some fresh water up here in Canada, although uh, although it's cold. So I was going to say, I was going to say, you know, I can't see myself moving anywhere else unless it's cheaper or more tropical. Because let's mm. let's be fair, or has better coffee. I could do that. Um, but like everybody else, I came from Web Two. Um, I think you know you can tell by the grain in my beard. I've been around a, a few times around the sun, and um, you know i started my career in in i dabbled in teaching i did a little bit of sales um did a little bit of you know uh, marketing and then i started my own company and that was really where i i started and grew my company it was a, a wholesale retail um company in canada um and grew it fairly large until covid unfortunately killed it uh, as it did with a lot of businesses unfortunately but at that time you know i was managing 20 people across multiple locations and and what really, you know, I took out of that was that I was really a people person, that I really liked, you know, people. And I really liked um, interacting with people, being on the floor, talking with our customers and our clients. That was my favorite part. And so that kind of pushed me on this journey through marketing and community. Um, and I got into crypto around the same time um, in, in late 2019 um, and, you know, took on my first sort of marketing, I'll, I'll go marketing community job. Um, with a project shortly thereafter. I think in those early days, we were all just sort of so hyped for anything that had substance that, you know, we were jumping on board and supporting projects where we could. And I, you know, I have a skill set with marketing and community. So I was more than happy to help a couple of projects along the way that 
um, I was invested in um, and that I thought were great and, and they still exist today. So I felt good about that. Um, but I got my first real job in crypto in um, shortly thereafter with a DEX in the SWE network when SWE was just in its infancy, um, for those of you who are familiar with the SWE network. And so it was really cool building a project in an ecosystem that was just developers and other projects. And, um, you know, what, what I took away from that was a lot of business development skill and a lot of understanding how BD in, in Web3 environments works, but also how important not only like outward community is, but inward community, because we didn't have any customers. We didn't have any investors. We didn't have any community members. We had an ecosystem of projects and we worked together. And then when, you know, as we were building up to the SWE launch, then it really, you know, coalesced into something that was amazing. And so, so I'm still talking to a lot of those projects that I worked with um, during that time because I made some really good friends. And I think it really helped me, you know, understand the, the possibilities that we have with community here in Web3. So, you know, been doing uh, been doing the community management thing for a while. After that, um, I moved from SWE into uh, a Cure Layer 1, um, where again, I did community management. In SWE, you know, when I left, we had 110,000 people in the Discord, a couple hundred thousand on our Twitter, um, left that in a great position, similar with the Layer 1. The next Layer 1 I worked with was their community manager. So I focused more on you know, developing engagement strategies, initiatives, um, you know, working with our content creator for an active Twitter account and growing that account um, organically. And, you know, really just, um, I'll say this a lot, everything I've done in Web3 has been so fun because the people are so amazing. Um, and I get to do fun things like this with Tyler, so. Yeah, David, I mean, uh, it's gonna be super fun here. I uh, always just love, uh, shooting the got to ooh my idioms are getting me into trouble already shooting the I don't even know the I, shibari um <laughs> we'll file it away and get back to it later yeah yeah exactly no yeah. but i think uh one of the great things about this community is that we have so many people with diverse perspectives with uh different takes on the space with different knowledge about what's going on in the the kadena ecosystem for that matter. And I know you've been at the, the front lines chatting with lots of folks and uh, just so excited to, to hear more about uh, your new role and what you've been enjoying. And I know that while the, the role may be new, that it isn't a new activities um, for you, that this has been an area that you've been involved in for a while. See, Ron the Wizard has a question here. Maybe we'll just jump right into that. Sounds like a good one. Question for Dave. What does your day to day look like as a community manager? Is being a community manager for an entire blockchain slash eco any different than doing it for a single project? Absolutely. Um, that's a great question. And not even a plant question. I love it. Um, what does my day-to-day -day look like? I mean, if you listen to Mike, he wasn't lying when he said it's busy. It's a lot of meetings. Um, it's a lot of connecting with the different team members. Um, this goes into a little bit, you know, what we wanted to talk about later, but you know, what we're doing as a marketing and community team is we're really rebuilding and rebranding. And, you know, with that, there's a lot of development that's taking place, you know, internally so we can, you know, hashtag new Kadena. Um, and so day to day is a lot of a lot of right now strategy, planning, getting ideas down, fleshing out ideas, um, you know, looking at timelines and how we're going to apply those ideas to our, our current community and sort of, you know, what what we need to do to to drive the objectives um, that we have for this community. Um, so, yeah, it's it's busy and sleep, as you can tell from the bag and bags under my eyes is um, lacking right now, but it's fun. Um, and is being a community manager for an entire blockchain eco any different than doing it for a single project? A hundred percent. So one of my one of my passions one of my goals as far as community in uh, a layer one in it for an entire ecosystem is that you know really we are a base for the projects to build on us so we we are a platform for devs and projects to come and build on kadena and part of my job as a community manager is not only to to hype up and to engage and to grow the kadena community but it's also to provide support to those projects 
because at the end of the day, by growing those projects, you know, we really grow our entire ecosystem and it's, and it's really beneficial for all of us. So, you know, that's one of the things that we're, we're also handling in the back end is sort of how we can increase the support that community and, and marketing can give to our grantees and to the projects that are building on Kadena. Amazing. So I, I had to jump in on GCF's question because I thought it was so good, uh, but actually wanted to, oh, Ron the Wizard. Oh my gosh, it was your question. My bad. GCF also had some nice comments, but Ron the Wizard, thanks for that good question. I also want to jump back because you mentioned community a few times here. and uh, Definitely agree it's all about community. Let's talk about it a little bit more. What, what are your thoughts on sure. state of community? So, I mean, I think the state of the community is, hmm, it's a good question. We're in transition, um, you know, and I think there are two real factors at play when I look at our community. You know, I'll be the first to, to admit that right now the community, our main channels, they're kind of dead. Um, there's, there's activity, but it's not really what I want to see when I look at a community channel, when I look at a Discord or a Telegram. You know, we have we have the people interacting from sort of a high level perspective where we have devs coming in and asking questions and, and we have, you know, people coming in voicing um, questions, concerns, comments. That's great. But what we're, we're really lacking, I think, is the interaction between um, the individuals in the community, you know, because that's that's the beauty of Web3. Like like Web3 was always about finding people with common interests and hanging out you know when i started it was about hanging out in the discord and and having those casual conversations and really getting that activity up and and supporting your project at the same time um and and you know that's something that we're going to get back to but we got to look at sort of you know the reasons why we're not there right now and it really in my mind comes down oh the dogs are excited Ooh, dogs um, are in baby that's right. Um, so we, we really have to look at the reasons why we're here. And, and I think it comes down to two. Uh, and the first is, of course, the bear market. You know, how many people haven't logged on to their to their discord or looked at their wallet since the bear market started? So that's one thing that we always have to keep in the back of our mind. Uh, but the other reason is that I, I think as an organization, we really haven't had the resources that are required to really focus on maintaining that level of community. And that's something that we are absolutely, you know, we're not only working on that. I think we've done a really good job of allocating more resources. Um, looking at the the marketing team, we when I started, I was the fourth member, and that was only a few weeks ago. And now we have eight members in our marketing community team. So I think we're we we as an organization are putting in the, you know, we're putting in the effort, and we're putting in um, what's required to dedicate those resources so we have time, so we can do the fun things, um, so we can do the things that we need to, to grow that community. Um, so that's, I, I mean, that's my kind of look, that's that's my overview of sort of what the state of the community is. And, you know, it's nothing that we can't overcome. Um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be an amazing ride as we get back to the top. Cool, all right. Um, well, since we're talking about community, might be a reasonable time to drop a Zeely code. So check it out. Ooh. K colon immunity. Wow. Immunity. Often confused with immunity. Immunity is more of like the, the holistic. Um, I think it's that's where we're going for wellness. Now, community, K count, immunity. Check it out for your Zeely code. Thanks for being here. All right. We got a, a few more questions here. Uh, have a, <laughs> this is a great question from, from Discord, from, from Fudo. Dave, when Kadena Community Collective Poker Tourney? You know, what's funny. So I, I know that that's, you know, normally I would say, oh, we're going to do it, you know, whenever, or that's a great idea. I'll look into it, but I'm going to tell you something. So we recently hired a, a security audit consultant. I think that's his title anyway to come in and help me really look at the discord server specifically and sort of how we've set it up because um you know as i've mentioned in the last space and i think in the space before one of the things i'm working on right now is redesigning uh the discord top to bottom so we have a more functional discord and he and i were just chatting um in in telegram a couple of days ago 
And I said to him, and I said this, it actually was from the space, from anybody who's listening to the space on Monday, when I said, you know, one of my dreams is to be able to take an entire Discord server and do, you know, some sort of um, group activity, group game, because I used to stream uh, video games on Twitch. Uh, I still do occasionally. I would love to start that up again, but host the Kadena community as part of my live Twitch and some sort of battle royale. Fun. And he messaged me after and he was like, hey, I can do that. We can set it up so you can do whatever you want. And he actually mentioned poker. So um, uh, absolutely. I think that would be hilarious. Something that uh, mm -hmm. something that I'm already looking into. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I uh, also want to talk a little bit about education and onboarding. You know, with Mike and the new marketing effort and all the folks in the marketing team now up to eight, as you said, there's uh, clearly going to be some element of new folks coming into the community. So I'm curious what your take is on how do we how do we educate folks, how do we onboard folks and, and bring them into this uh, Kadena fam? Yeah, I mean, that's really important. Retention is... You know, we talk about engagement as a metric for community, but I think retention is a bigger metric that we have to focus on. And it really comes down to when we get new people in the community, how easy is it for them to understand the ecosystem and to understand not only how to interact with the ecosystem, but how to participate in the, in, in the ecosystem as well. So I know that we have some initiatives that exist currently, um, like Kadena Academy for people who want to learn how to build using Pact. Um, but you know, one of the focuses that we're going to have moving forward is is increasing the accessibility to both the Kadena Academy as well as setting up the Discord and the Telegram to be more user friendly. So when people come in, they get access to that information really quickly um, and they can, you know, sort of get a holistic view of the ecosystem, understand what Kadena is all about, understand why we're such an amazing place for these projects um, and then and then become fans and become active members. So I think it's about really increasing the accessibility to that information. So when people come in, they feel, you know, first of all, they got to feel welcome. And we're changing the culture around the community, as everybody has seen, um, and making the educational resources that we have um, more available and improving those resources at the same time. So there's a pretty cut and dry answer for you. All right. To the point. I like it. I have a, another question here. From, from Discord, this is Sebastian DS. Is there a possibility that good projects with strong communities move to Kadena? I mean, DeFi, GameFi projects running on Ethereum, et cetera, moving completely to Kadena. I mean, that is a good question. So the question you, I'll answer a question with a question. What makes Ethereum a good chain for GameFi? Do you know, Tyler? Well, it's uh, principally adoption. So there's just a ton of Ethereum uh, users out there. There's also high adoption on the developer side. So Ethereum has the largest uh, developer community of smart contracts. And so those two factors um, do coalesce into some degree of network effects, where if someone builds something, it's easier to recruit users and uh, easier to, if, someone, if users are there and want something, for developers to respond. Now, on the flip side, Ethereum is also severely limited in some capacities, and this can cause frustrations, right? So I think there's anyone that's been around the block on the Ethereum blockchain and knows that some hours of the day, everything works fine. And then every once in a while, the network gets super congested and suddenly it is massively too expensive, right? This is why the you know crypto kitties back in the day being one of the first big games and Axie Infinity followed soon after and Axie famously... Um, was unable to scale on Ethereum because the game grew too fast. And then they, you know, side-chained onto Ronin and then the Ronin hack happened and that was a disaster. And so at the end of the day, yeah, people do build on Ethereum and then they quickly hit limits and problems and then have to build their own, you know, layer two or layer one technology. And it turns out it's hard to do that. And so, yeah, on some level, you build on Kadena and you don't hit those scaling issues, you'd solve a whole host of problems. But, um, you know, there's uh, an element of, of network uh, effects and momentum that uh, means that there's uh, battles, even with the technical superiority, uh, you still have to do some work to onboard folks. Yeah, yeah, to me, it, that's, yeah, that's the exact same answer I would have given. It's really about, and we talk about it all the time, scalability. It's about TPS at the end of the day, because you can't really have a game with a million users. Look at, look at you know, any of the popular 
games right now that are online, you know, Call of Duty being one, you have a million users online at any given time. So having the the scalability to, to handle that number of users is impossible on a chain like Ethereum. Um, Sebastian makes a good comment. It's all about users. Um, but I would challenge that and I would say, you know, what comes first, the, the game or the users? So if we can, you know, market Kadena appropriately and bring in developers or nurture developers that we have with us already to to launch you know good quality games um i think a user base can follow that so it's it's about you know it's it's about marketing it's about marketing the strengths of our chain to the appropriate people so um and i think that in itself will solve the the user problem uh, as soon as we get some some great stuff, and you know, I'd love to stream Kadena games on Twitch. That would be amazing. Um, you can, can also boost that user number by hitting like on this video. <laughs> Look at that plug. <laughs> uh, okay, we got a nice question here from from Pekka. Uh, also, hello, Pekka of, of Unit. Uh, so great to have you on the stream. In your view, what are the most important drivers? How an active community translates to new projects and adoption. Yeah, I mean, this goes back to what I was saying about, um, you know, really supporting new projects and, and really supporting new devs um, and current devs with our community. So having an active community to me is, you know, is about being able to share that community with these projects. And if we can give a project a good foundation, if we can promote that project, if we can really nurture that project with our community that gives them a huge leg up um, and it gives them an opportunity to to really you know have that support from not only us but our community and it gives them the best chance of success um, so it's really about activating our community to support the projects that are building um, on Kadena. and so you know we we are going to be doing some of that um, absolutely you know right now when a new grantee signs on um, we have a, a pretty um, a pretty good process in place where we write an article, do a blog, get them on a campfire, but there's a lot more we can do. Um, there's a lot more that we can do that's going to directly involve the community, whether it's, you know, through co-marketing activities, doing something specifically in the Discord or the Telegram. We've got Zeely. Um, code is collective. Um, with, you know, Zeely, we have an opportunity to do some real impactful um, cross-marketing with, with projects as they onboard. Uh, as well as, you know, support them in other ways. Um, you know, a lot of these projects come on and it's just a team of one or two people and they don't have the capacity to do the marketing and get involved in community. So definitely something that I want to get involved with is, you know, creating a process, creating a protocol where we do provide them some support as part of that process. Awesome. We got a, a couple of really interesting questions streaming in here. We'll try and get to them in, in order. From Yaren Dez, what is the plan for gathering, managing feedback moving forward? Yeah, um, that's a great question. That's a timely question. Um, I won't go further into that than that. But I think I think feedback is, you know, part of a larger area of two-way communication. And we are in Web three, and and as a lot of you know. Um, you know, we have been gathering feedback since I started uh, and definitely since Mike came on board. So we're going to be not only evaluating how we're gathering feedback and how we're bringing that into the into the, the marketing department, but we're going to do things like we're already doing. So Mike and I are in a lot of the satellite groups, in a lot of the telegram groups, and we're actively engaging community members. Um, I think that's one thing is to is to show with action that we're going to be there and listening, being very proactive with listening. Um, and then, you know, that's also falls into that whole and I talk about this a lot because, you know, I'm a discord guy, but that falls into that whole, you know, discord um, revamp where we're going to try to make it more functional and usable and where we have a forum for feedback where we can have direct communication with the team where we have representatives in. So, so, you know, I think the important thing about feedback is you guys as a community, even from my short time here, I know you're not afraid to give it to us. And it's our job to, to let you know that we're listening and to act on that. So, 
so absolutely a priority for us and that's part of the culture change that we're trying to we're trying to enact um you know increasing that two-way communication right on great answer uh, i see a quick question from uh siphon on linkedin that i'll take uh can cadena can do a large number of users at once in terms of scalability so of course this is it's kind of a mixture of Cardano and Cadena. I'm assuming you're talking about Cadena with the K. Um, so <laughs> Cadena with the K, yes, that's one of the core value props is that chain web runs today 20 blockchains in parallel. And so it has roughly 20 times the throughput of Ethereum in terms of transactions per second. So very highly scalable in this parallel scaling model. So yeah, happy to chat more about that if you have follow-up questions, but uh, great to have you in the community. Welcome, welcome. So see a question from uh, our one of our, our favorite members of the community, Kobe Lazar, of course, of Koala Wallet. Hey, Dave, how much of your work is currently set on the wide community? And how, oh, look at that Koala sticker, love it. <laughs> how much is, of your work is set on the wide community and how much of your time is going towards dev community? Is that your realm and what you're building out? Winky face. Winky face. I can't, I'll try it. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to smile <laughs> and wink at the same time. Oh, anyway. There you go. <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So right now I would say it's about 75, 25. If I'm going to give you real numbers. Um, oh, Mike's there too. Hi, Mike. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, about 75% of my time is is community-wide um, versus dev. I'm definitely getting involved more in the in the communication with the dev side of things. Um, but, you know, we've got, uh, we've got, you know, a fairly large team now and we've got a plan in place to manage that aspect. So um, I'm gonna be honest. Um, okay, I had to look for the question again because Mike distracted me um, with his presence. Oh, no, yeah. you're good. Let's see here. Uh, oh, my gosh. Look at that. We got Mike saying, in between sessions, just want to listen for a minute. Dave and Tyler killing as usual. Mike, oh, what a gem of a person. So great to have you here. Uh, yeah, if you missed Mike's uh, campfire the other week, definitely go back and check it. That thing was spicy. Dropped a lot of alpha. It was super fun. Kobe chimes and says, Mike and I have the same fun username strats. Really on core brand value. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you say that to all of the members of the campfire. Oh, man. Love it, love it, love it. Um, let's, get, let's get back to this. Okay. How much yeah. of your work is currently set on the wide community and how much of your time going to dev community? Yeah, 75, 25. So um, I'm definitely part of the dev community interaction. And like I said, I really want to become more of a part of it as far as the onboarding and marketing and supporting process goes. Um, but we definitely have people in the marketing department that are, are you know, 100% focused on that. So something that we recognize, you know, both of those are very important. Um, and now, like I said earlier at the beginning, we have the resources that we can allocate appropriately to those, um, those individual needs. Yep, right on. Question from Sebastian. Technically, for example, Axie Infinity can move to Kadena or is it impossible because language program compatibility? Uh, Sebastian, great question. So I have a kind of funny um, little backstory here. Uh, so Jeff Zerlin, who's one of the co-founders of Axie Infinity, is a friend of mine. Um, he's uh, one of our best friends as a common gone to bachelor parties together. Uh, and I was had a sort of low-key conversation with him maybe around 2019, 2020 about uh, Kadena and was telling him how he should put Axie on, on Kadena. And at the time, he was like, ah, no, we got our own thing going. We're going to build out our own solution. We think we can do it. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I think in hindsight, he probably wishes that he had built out on Kadena instead. Um, but you know, you, you live and you learn and actually is to think, a you know, amazing community and they're doing killer work and, you know, been one of the true pioneers in the game space. So, um, yeah, I think never say never, but yeah, they definitely have built out obviously a huge amount of code in, in Solidity on, in, on Ronin now. And, uh, I think they're pretty committed to, to Ronin given how much capital they, they put into, you know, bailing people out and keeping it alive. So. Yeah, I think they're pretty set in the strategy, but hopefully, you know, new games and and folks can can learn from that experience and and uh, not get wrecked. Let's see here from DCF. Tyler, isn't an EVM environment being built for those developers who want to continue developing on Solidity but execute on Kadena? Or am I crazy? And just pull that out of my butt. 
no, DCF, I do not think you're crazy. And I think that is uh, an area of very active discussion. Um, and uh, I always need to tread my words carefully as I think about what you're supposed to say and not say. So I'll leave it there and just say you're not crazy. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, I mean, we're all a little bit crazy, so uh, it's okay. All, all a little bit crazy. See another Kobe question. With so many in crypto focused more on price movement than immediate building, how do you successfully set up a foundation to support the network dApps or just prices versus just prices? Tricky. So we can't, of course, talk about price movement or anything. So what we can talk about is how do you successfully set up a foundation to support the network? Let's, let's stick with that one. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I think we've talked about that a lot already. It's that, you know, we have to support projects coming on board and we have to support developers in a variety of ways. Um, you know, what, what my area is and what my focus is, is on the, uh, on, on the marketing side, on the community side. So providing them support, like I said, you know, and, and this was something that I brought from my previous role as a layer one is, is we found that as projects onboarded, you know, they didn't have the resources themselves to do the appropriate uh, outreach to community and to grow that initial community. So we offered them opportunities to co-market with us. We offered them tips and tricks and and help them, you know, I would do things like help them set up their Discord um, or help them set up their Telegram. So little things like that. And that's, and that's what we can do, what I can do from the community side to help. And then from a broader perspective, you know, we have many people in many departments that are, are focused on supporting new projects and developers as they come in. And I think as long as we are focused on that, um, you know, growing the ecosystem grows the project. And that, you know, without saying anything, that helps everybody, right? You know, that's the goal is to is to support everybody that's building on Kadena. Right on. <clears throat> right on. Love it. See a question up. Sebastian, any statement about Francesco? Gate. <laughs> uh, yeah, Francesco is a, you know, esteemed colleague, a uh, great, great guy. Uh, he's left the company to work on other projects. Um, my understanding um, when I last caught up with him is that he's very excited about Pact and Kadena and uh, staying in the family and uh, doesn't have an announcement about what his, his next uh, project is. But um, yeah, when I last caught up with him, it sounded really, really freaking exciting. So I have, I have a feeling that uh, Francesco is, is going to be uh, around here, uh, even as not uh, as the lead of Kadena Eco, but still a super important member of the ecosystem. So yeah, that's a quick response there. And I see Ron the Wizard says something in, um, in Italian, maybe. <laughs> Christopher Robinson, how about are y'all actively trying to get any new listings? Yeah, I definitely have talked with um, like Dan Wiggins and, and folks about this. Uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, Kadena is all about interoperability, right? And interoperability means uh, with other blockchains, with projects on the network. That also means with the broader ecosystem, and it means with Web2 um, projects. So, yeah, I think that's an area that folks recognize is, is important. Uh, so so definitely an area that uh, always working on, on BD to, to build out the best relationships we can. Um, Kabir Hussain says, when are we going to see top NFT marketplaces enable Kadena? Well, when they decide to, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're here, we're there. The API is stable. Um, so, uh, up to them. And honestly, I think that's something that's, you know, user driven. So, so maybe David, um, something I'd like to turn your attention towards is what can community do in terms of, um, you know, complementing the efforts of people that are doing BD? How, how does, in a distributed permissionless world how is it that communities go about adopting uh new blockchains and and technologies and, and what role might community play in, in driving that adoption yeah i think there's some old school tactics that the community can do which is simply get out there and and talk about kadena and and make those requests you want to see a, a top nft marketplace enable kadena ask them for it get their you know get their attention so you know, enabling the community to to go out there and be ambassadors for us, I think, is something that, you know, we need to do. Um, so just being active, you know, promote the project, talk about it, get people excited about it. Um, we're excited about it. And I think you guys should be, too. Excellent. Uh, Ron the Wizard has clarified that uh, 
<laughs> and una polpetta picante, apologies to our Italian friends out there, means that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so happy to have that in my vocabulary. Thank you very much. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, let's see here. I feel like I may have a gloss. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's a good question from Cadena Ecosystem. What's your opinion on those guys at Cadena Ecosystem? Like Chris, who does the AMAs. Hi, Chris. No. <laughs> Any plans of working with them? <laughs> sure. Grab me. Get me on an AMA. I'd love to be on an AMA with you guys. Um, you know, you're part of the ecosystem. It says so in your name. So let's. Uh, I'm open to anybody, anybody who wants to uh, get me on a space or... Um, you know, your own version of the campfire. I'd love to uh, chat and get to know the ecosystem a little bit better. Right on, right on. <clears throat> Amazing. Yeah. And, we got and thanks, Chris, for the sticker. Amir <laughs> says, nice shout out to Chris from Chris. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Could have been someone else in the ecosystem. You never know. But uh, yeah, Chris is definitely a powerhouse there. Uh, let's see here. And we'll reach out for sure. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely. Amazing. Amir Deman <laughs> from Utterly Ridiculous. Fantastic. Well, we are heading towards the end of our uh, allotted time here, but we, we got time possibly for, for, for one last question or so. So if you have any uh, burning questions or if I missed one, um, please, please post it. Randy Dynamic, what are the best ideas you heard for rewarding community members? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's something that comes up a lot and something that we're going to be doing a lot moving forward. So I think there's two types of rewards. One is, um, and this is, you know, kind of after school specialist, but one is acknowledgement and validation. So, you know, one of the principles of, of, the, of working with community is, you know, acknowledging and validating contributions, which I think is, is a, an intangible reward. Um, and something that we should all strive for, you know? So take, for example, um, we ran a meme contest through Zeely. And thanks for everybody who, there were some hilarious memes. Um, we're still sorting through some of them. Um, and, you know, that was great. And so, you know, to acknowledge um, those contributions, the ones that we really appreciated on our main Twitter account, I think that's big. I think, you know, really working with the community in that capacity. Um, the other thing is obviously um, some cool swag. Uh, we just gave away five swag packs for the last Zeely challenge, um, which we're going to continue to do. And we had, so uh, I'll drop a little alpha here that we haven't talked about for those of you still listening about Zeely. We had such a successful September Zeely that we have started a conversation about what other rewards we can provide um, non-monetary. So it's, um, you know, you guys killed it. You guys crushed it on Zeely, and that makes us want to make it bigger and better and have bigger and better rewards. So um, we talked about a new run of sweaters, maybe, because um, the hoodies are amazing. Ooh, um, yeah. Super comfy, I know. Um, so I think, I think, I think about rewards in a different way than most people. Most people just think, you know, I want something tangible. Um, I think there's a good combination between those intangible rewards uh, as well as cool things like swag. So I like this idea. Can we do spooky Zeely for October? Ooh, kind of into that. Mm. Uh, well, running upstairs, David. <laughs> Kadena Nikes. Oh my God, that's incredible. Freaking like, can we make like a, anyone in the community want to make like a K swoosh? I don't know, like a K and then like the whoosh, turns into the swoosh at the end. I feel like that'd be kind of sweet. I mean, I'm still looking for uh, a neon sign. I want a neon Cadena sign for my background. So mm. if somebody wants to hook me up with that, that would be amazing. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, so we have for those that are not in the loop yet, there is indeed a Cadena Mining Club after party on x on twitter spaces and i hear that david may even be dropping in yeah they didn't invite me i'm just gonna see myself in it's okay <laughs> incredible uh yeah so definitely go check out the after party if you haven't got enough cadena uh, jc wants to add in that uh we should probably call it after the fire that's that sounds kind of kind of catchy i don't know it's it's slightly ominous but like slightly catchy you know it's like ah 
after the party is a hotel lobby. After the fire is the, well, anyway, uh, I was going to say rubble, but that's, we got to come up. Oh, we'll workshop that. We'll workshop that. After the fire is the rejuvenation of the green saplings as the forest undergoes a new cycle of, of growth. Uh, anyway, it's been a really fun campfire. David, uh, such a pleasure to have you on here. Uh, really lovely to, to hear your thoughts and, you know, frankness and uh, really thoughtful answers around community and growth and engagement. Uh, see, we got a lot of people on here. So thank you, everyone. Oh, Kobe, Kadena Embers with the save. Incredible. That's so much better than what I was thinking. Yeah, Kadena Embers. Hell yeah. You know, after the fire are the Kadena Embers, which are now distributed. And you started with one fire, now you got 20 embers, and I got 20 fires burning. Ah, oh, the Kadena Glow. My man, we got to get you. I don't know why I'm hosting this. You probably should be. Uh, this is amazing. If anyone wants spooky NFTs, by <laughs> the afterburn. Oh man, Kadena Island. That is on. Oh, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah. Wow. I got to just pose questions and get everyone's answers, and then just read the best ones. These are so much better than I came up with. In any case, uh, David, thank you so much for coming with us. Do you have any last words before we part ways here today? I'm actually not hearing anything. I don't know if that's my audio or or, or yours. Oh, that was me. Sorry. Okay, you're back. Yeah. Nice. I was going to say, I have a couple of things. First, I saw a comment here that I wanted to respond to from Christopher Robinson. He said, Kadena beanie season is upon us. First of all, they're not beanies. <laughs> they're they're toques. And I think you just need to participate in the Zealy campaign because um, you can definitely get yourself a sweet Kadena beanie by winning the next Zealy. So, Ooh. and it's cold in here. So I should have been wearing this the entire time. <laughs> um last last comments listen guys like i know there's been a ton of of talk about um about the community and sort of about where we are and where we want to be and what we need to do to get there and um you know when i first started the first thing i did was i jumped in a bunch of these little groups and started asking questions sort of what do you want you know what what are your pain points what are the things that you want us to consider as we're rebuilding um, and, and I still want that. So everybody, um, first off, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I'm hyping up my Twitter account at Katana Dave, follow me. You can message me on Twitter. I got my DMS open. You can reach out to me on discord. You can hit me up on telegram. Any way you can get a hold of me, let me know if you have any thoughts. Um, I love crowdsourcing. This is a web three environment. This is, we are the same community. Um, I'm really looking forward to spending a lot of time. Um, getting to know everybody and I recognize so many names in this chat already. And thanks everybody for, uh, for hanging out with me for a little while. Um, this has been super fun. Yeah, this has been super fun and, uh, don't let the party stop. We got the, the afterburn, the after party, uh, the after fire, uh, the Kadena embers. It's, it's all going down at, uh, Twitter spaces or X spaces hosted by Kadena mining club. Uh, and sounds like Dave will be the special guest and, and here's the link again for, for those that are curious. Until next time, thanks for joining us for this campfire. David, such a pleasure to have you on here. Great to see you and officially meet you. Thank you. You as well. All right. Cheers, folks.